everyone, and thank you, Dean Gibling. Graduates, I am honored to share this significant moment in your life with you, your family, friends, and faculty members. I remember sitting where you are today, excited for the future, a little nervous and scared, and elated that I finally finished. I also remember listening to the speaker and thinking, huh, fat chance I'll ever be up there, but I bet I could do a better job. Well, be careful what you wish for, right? I was so worried about forgetting people's names that I had to write Dean Giblings on the back of my hand, phonetically. After being invited to speak to you today, I started to think about some lessons I've learned over these past decades that I wish I was told about when I was sitting where you are. It would have saved me a lot of trouble and maybe even a few mistakes along the way while developing my career as a scientist, engineer, academician, entrepreneur, venture capitalist, executive, and board director. Yep, that's a mouthful. One of my close friends always tells this very precocious 10-year-old, Amelie, I want you to feel comfortable making mistakes, just not the same ones over and over again, or the ones I made, or the ones you see other people make. Fortunately, mistakes are as limitless as your potential. With I've been an entrepreneur where the success rate is something like 5 to 10 percent. I've been a venture capitalist where the success rate is maybe 10 to 15 percent, depending on how we work the numbers. I've been a scientist where the success rate is what? Well, it's whatever you say it is, but that's a different story. I've been on TV where the success rate is not being canceled after the pilot. And I got to hang out with Cal Penn of the hit film franchise Harold and Kumar fame. It was hard for me not to call him Kumar initially, and no, he did not offer me a reefer. So that first lesson, and maybe the only one you need, is to pick careers where you can fail more than you succeed and still be considered a success. Think about it. How many music performers do you know with platinum records? How many scientists receive the Nobel Prize? If you really want recognition about the only surefire guarantee not to fail, is to release a Kim Kardashian-type video on the internet and watch it go viral. But seriously, this moment is a turning point in your life. Sure, it's going to be difficult justifying eating cereal for every meal going forward, but you've achieved an amazing goal that only a small fraction of the population achieves. Relish it. You've earned it. And this is really the second lesson I've learned. Be present in this moment. Take it in. There are a lot of activities occurring today. Stop, breathe, and feel this right now. Your degree is a foundation for the rest of your life, a testament to your knowledge and problem solving that you can call upon when faced with any challenge life throws you. And trust me, you will be faced with many challenges in life, and it's how you deal with them that defines you, not the challenges in this themselves. When I begin thinking about challenges, I always try to remember another life lesson. I'm really the only one who should be imposing boundaries on myself. I remember when I was at Charles de Gaulle Airport in Paris, loading up the rental car, and a thief reached into the briefcase of my colleague. When I saw this, I screamed at him, and he took off running. My first thought was, he got the laptop. But it's just a laptop, so I'll let him have it. But then I thought, I'm not going to let him get away with that. So I took off after him. Thank goodness I was traveling in my Skechers. And as I ran after him through the parking lot and then up the stairwell, and he was throwing magazines and those large European-sized chocolate bars at me to get me to stop, my colleague finally caught up and said, I yelled so loud it must have startled the thief, and he dropped the laptop back in the case. Now, maybe it wasn't the wisest thing to do, but I knew from that moment on that fear is fleeting and holding people accountable for their actions is a core value for me. And if I could chase down a thief without being afraid, I sure as heck could launch my own startup without fear. Nervousness, of course, but not fear. And his lesson was never try to steal from a crazy American lady who just got off an 11-hour flight. So at the end of this chapter of your life, you are now well-equipped to move forward and write the next chapters of your life in any way that you choose. The possibilities really are limitless. Only you set the boundaries. Don't be afraid to fail. Failure shouldn't be a boundary in and of itself. Some of my failures have been my greatest successes. Trust me, I've had many failures, and I've learned the most from them. As I sat here in this auditorium for my PhD back in 97 and walked up on stage to receive my hood, I never imagined in my wildest dreams what an eclectic career path I'd follow and some of the amazing people I would work with. 
Like the second man to walk on the moon, Buzz Lightyear. Oh, I mean Buzz Aldrin. Or NASCAR driver Carl Edwards. I used to be terrified when I had to stand in front of a crowd like this and talk. Everyone's looking at you. You're not sure if they're staring because they find you insightful or if there's something on your face. It's like Sandra Bullock in Miss Congeniality when she says she already fallen and tr already tripped and fallen and made an idiot of herself. When I was asked to be a judge for a new engineering competition series for the Discovery Channel that aired globally in over 100 countries, oh my, that was definitely outside my comfort zone. Television, media, millions of people watching, that was frightening. Caught up in the moment, I could have succumbed to that fear and hidden behind my self-imposed fear-laden boundaries and said, no, I am so glad that I didn't. I remember the night before my first day on set, I maybe got two hours of sleep, and there were over 100 crew members and multiple cameras on me. I went in that morning thinking, where's my Michael Caine and team of highly trained specialists to help me with my hair that looked like I just stuck my finger in the light socket? Who was going to transform me into something I wasn't? In my case, who was going to make sure I always said something intelligent, insightful, the perfect soundbite for the perfect edit? But as filming progressed day after day, episode after episode, I grew more comfortable. Each day I asked for feedback, considered suggestions, and became more confident. Filming was easier and easier until I was able to tune out distractions and not accept artificial self-imposed limitations. This was not the first time that I was completely outside my comfort zone in unfamiliar territory, taking risks and confronting fears. And it most definitely will not be my last. Each time you step outside your comfort zone, you will get better at it. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable and take risks. You never know what is on the other side of the door unless you open it and walk through. Opportunities will be presented to you, and while they may not be a perfect fit, Trust that in that moment when you lean back on what you've learned and experienced here in these buildings with those seating around you today, that you have the wisdom and tools to take full advantage of them when they advise. I have another friend who has always lived by the simple rule. Take the opportunity everyone else wants, but where no one else wants to go. Or take the gig no one else wants in the place everyone wants to be. He'll be the first to say it hasn't always worked out the way he's wanted, but he has definitely seen and done more over the last 25 years than most people will in a lifetime. And while the new opportunity and risk may be scary and uncomfortable, it's in these moments when you don't know what to expect and you may not be in control when life stretches you and you take a big step forward. It's when something frightening and uncertain can turn into something wonderful and your comfort zone is gradually expanded. Who knows what your Paris airport scenario will be, but if it leads to working with the likes of Buzz Aldrin, Cal Carl Edwards, and Cal Penn, right on. It took a team to help you get where you are today. So another lesson to remember is no one succeeds alone. I'm sure during your time here, you have assembled a group of people who have encouraged, supported, guided you, and even called you out when you weren't at the top of your game. This group probably includes parents, siblings, grandparents, a favorite professor, friends, and perhaps a significant other. Be good to them, because they are a vital part of your success whether you know it or not. And you never know how long you're going to be couch surfing in their apartments and homes until you actually make enough money to pay back the student loans to get your own place. I call my support group Team, Team Christine. Many of us are lucky enough to have mentors in our lives, but I've been fortunate, and I have been fortunate in that regard. It was at a cocktail party a few years ago with one of my bo company's board members who was in his early 70s, and he pointed across the room to a man he identified as his mentor. I wasn't sure I heard him correctly. The guy was many years his junior, fit, tailored suit. We've all heard of trophy wives, but this was a trophy mentor. And I said, you've been successful for years. You still need a mentor? He said, you are never too old for a mentor, and I will always have one until the day I die. My team is eclectic, just like me. My husband is a major part of it, not only to support me during times of success, but during failure, too. He's my pillar, the one who grounds me, the one who understands there is a pair of Jimmy Choo's, Manolo Blahniks, Louboutins, Marc Jacobs, you get the gist, in my closet for every great accomplishment. Because who says you can't be smart and successful and love a great pair of shoes? My colleagues are sounding boards, 
and help me sort out my good ideas from the bad. They also help me figure out when I have a good idea, how we can turn it into something real. You've succeeded and made it to this commencement celebration because of your hard work, ideas, and dedication. You've proven you can think. Now it's time to do. Don't feel like you need to do that by yourself. Being a leader, being a success does not happen alone. The road through life is filled with peaks and valleys and a few diversions. Some of them can be messy, but hopefully nothing like navigating around all the newbies on their bikes during the first week of classes here in the fall. Really, what is so difficult about a bike circle? But I digress. Looking back on life, I can see how important my support network, my team, has been to my success. Another noteworthy lesson I've learned is that I can't always shape reality to fit my desires. Maybe if I were a politician, I could. But I've decided 17 Republican candidates are enough for this presidential campaign season. So instead, people define me as a woman or an entrepreneur or whatever title or word allows them to compartmentalize me in a way that fits their structured world of boxes. Instead of letting others try to fit you into whatever reality they are trying to create, define yourself by the person you are and want to be. I'm a person who is generous with my time to those in need, honest, ethical. What is it that you want to be known for? It's what's in here and here that define you. Don't measure yourself by what you do with, for a living. Measure yourself by who you are on the inside. We are all driven to succeed or we would not be here today. Remember the old Harley Davidson saying, live to ride, ride to live? What do you live to do? What do you do that makes you feel alive? We all need a certain amount of money to pay our bills, but I never think of it as having to earn a living. You've earned your degree. You've earned the respect that comes with being an Aggie. You've earned the respect of your peers and professors, but you don't have to earn your life. Remember, you are part of a small fraction with advanced degrees, and yours comes from one of the top public research universities in the world. You've earned that degree, but that degree isn't what you are. It doesn't define you. It's up to you to determine what you do with your blessings and talents. It's up to you to set your boundaries. It's up to you to decide what risks you want to take. You have the ability to make a positive impact on this world. Life will ask a lot of you. It already has, and will continue to ask more. How do you want to answer that calling? Hi, I'm an insert occupation here. I challenge you to be more than just an occupation. I challenge you to stretch and pull, to take risks, to fail, to live, and to love. But above all, whatever you do, do it passionately, and do it in a way that feels authentic to who you are. We all come at life differently, emote differently, feel and experience things differently, but I urge you to be passionate in whatever you do. Passionate is, passion is the most contagious emotion. When you are passionate, people around you feel it. Think about the people you most like to be around. They believe in something. They feel strongly about something. They stand for something. They say what they mean and they mean what they say. You might not always agree with them, but you respect them. I've been in board meetings where I'm the only woman or the youngest person where I'm the contrarian. I've been forced to say what no one else will to make the call no one wants to make. I can't tell you how many people I've seriously peeved, but I can tell you that more often than not, people know and see how hard I've worked to come to my conclusions. They know how passionately I feel about what I do. People respect honesty and authenticity, particularly when coupled with a passionate approach to life. It took me a while to realize that happiness and fulfillment are a journey, not a destination. They are within you, an inside job that no amount of outer or material gratification can ensure. You also don't get true happiness from other people. It has to come from you and how you interact with people to make a difference. H.G. Wells once said that sometimes you have to step outside of the person you've been and remember the person you were meant to be. I absolutely believe that. For me, that process of self-discovery and education began during my time on this campus, in programs like the ones you are graduating from today. So if I leave you with one thought as you sail into the next chapter of your life, it would be that, yes, there will be challenges, but there are boundless opportunities as well. You already have shown that you know how to capitalize on one great opportunity when you see it. That's why you're here. 
I cannot wait to see what you accomplish as you embrace your opportunities and your challenges with integrity, passion, and humility. Thank you, and congratulations.